last time on Silly Science with Simon. I hope you've enjoyed these videos and that you've learned. What was that? Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for this episode of Silly Science with Simon. Last year I reached 1,000 subscribers and today we celebrate. <coughs> I want to say a huge thank you to all my subscribers and to anyone who's watched or shared my videos. In this special episode, I'm going to show you how to make your very own real life hovercraft. This one's a bit trickier than what I usually do, but if you follow these steps, you'll end up with something really cool. Are you ready? Then let's get science! Whoa! To make your own hovercraft, you will need a piece of 12 mm thick plywood, at least 1.2 meters wide, a piece of 1.5 meter wide vinyl, such as an old shower curtain, a petrol leaf blower, a jigsaw, um, the power tool kind of jigsaw, scissors, a pen, and a tape measure, a staple gun, silicon, safety glasses, ear protection, and an adult to help you. Hey Beck, I'm just about to use some power tools inside. I'm here in the garage, and I'm gonna show you how to make a hovercraft. The first step is to cut a circle out of your plywood with a diameter of 1.2 meters. To do this, hammer a nail into the middle of the plywood and use a piece of string 60 centimeters long to draw a circle. Place the plywood on a bench or a coffee table and ask an adult to use a jigsaw to cut the circle out. Make sure they're wearing eye and ear protection as well as a mask. Then draw another circle using a 30 centimeter piece of string and take the nail out. Place your leaf blower on the plywood circle. Mine's got a pipe with a 90 degree bend in it, so I'm making sure that this end of the pipe sits outside the smaller circle. Trace around the end of the pipe and use a jigsaw to cut this piece out. I want the hovercraft to look really cool, so I'm going to give it a coat of paint on the side without the smaller circle. First, I'll prime all the wood using this, and then I'll paint a pattern on it. Whilst that's drying, lay down your plastic and attach a 75 centimeter piece of string to the center. Use this string to draw a circle and then cut the circle out with a pair of scissors. Next, take a new piece of plywood and trace out another circle with a 30 centimeter piece of string. Place the plywood on a coffee table and cut this out. Be careful not to cut too far or you might... Uh oh. Uh oh. Put this plywood circle in the middle of the plastic circle. Using a coin with a two and a half centimeter diameter, trace out 12 evenly spaced circles on the plastic. These should be about two and a half centimeters away from the edge of the plywood circle. Then cut these out with a pair of scissors and strengthen the holes by using a hot glue gun to attach these extra pieces of plastic. Lay the plastic out and put the larger plywood circle on top of it. Use a pencil to draw another circle that's three centimeters from the edge of the plywood circle. Get an adult to help you for this next bit. Fold the plastic over so that the edge of the plastic touches this pencil circle and then use a staple gun to staple it in place. Fold the next bit of plastic over so that it keeps touching the pencil circle and then staple this into place. Keep repeating this around the whole circle. We now wanna make this airtight. To do this, you can use duct tape to tape the plastic to the plywood, but I found that gluing them together with silicon worked better. Leave this to dry for one day. After a day, turn it over and place the small plywood circle in the middle of the board and screw in seven 25 millimeter screws. Turn it over again and place your leaf blower on the top, lining up the pipe with the hole that you cut out earlier. Use a good amount of silicon to join these up and make them airtight. Use the silicon to glue the base of the leaf blower to the board. Lastly, add some pipe insulation around the edge of the hovercraft. This will soften the blow if I do crash into anything. And that's how you make a hovercraft. Let's put in some ear protection and do a few tests. The hovercraft is working really well. I can't feel any air escaping from the top. It slides when I give it a push and it holds me up. Now it's time to use our hovercraft. And for this, 
I'm going to take it to the Tonsley Innovation District in South Australia. Firstly, a big thank you to Tonsley for letting me use this space. It's usually used by businesses and researchers, but it's open to everyone to check out and includes this, a huge undercover space with a really smooth and flat surface. This is perfect for using our hovercraft. Let's do a few tests. The first test is to see how well the hovercraft slides by itself. Whoa, look at it go. It just keeps going and going. The second test is to see how well it slides when it's carrying a person. Beck didn't want to have the first go, so this is it carrying me. It was a heap of fun. The last test is to see how well the hovercraft slides in a circle. Awesome, check it out. So how does it work? To understand how it works, we first need to explain friction. Friction is a force that resists motion when two objects are touching each other. For example, there's a lot of friction between my shoes and the floor, which stops my feet from moving and me from doing the splits. However, there's not much friction when I'm just wearing socks, so my feet can move and I do the splits. The leaf blower pushes air into the plastic, which inflates into the shape of a tube. Air escapes from this tube through the 12 small holes and fills the space underneath the hovercraft. This air then pushes up against the board, lifting it off the ground. Air also escapes from underneath the tube, which further lifts the hovercraft off the ground. As the board is no longer touching the ground, there's very little friction and the hovercraft can slide around really easily. Thanks for watching this special episode of Silly Science with Simon. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe as Beck has promised to appear in one of my videos when I reach 10,000 subscribers. Have fun, do some science, and I'll see you again in two weeks.